Today, we're going to be ranking Asian girls from least toxic to most toxic. And who am I to rank them? I'm fully getting kids. Next up, we have Cambodian girls. I hope none of you are watching and I hope none of you know my address. Because similar to Lao girls, I am fucking afraid. Cambodian girls, A tier toxic. Next we have Sri Lankan girls. The first thing I know about Sri Lankans is that they don't like to be called Indian. I just don't usually hear too much about crazy Sri Lankan girls. I think they're quite pretty. Yeah. I don't hear much about them. I would put Sri Lankan girls on the D tier. Next one we have, and it's funny because firstly, their flag is red, meaning danger. And secondly, there's a star in the middle. Kapow! The Vietnamese girls. There is a reason why the Vietnamese war was lost. If you ever mess with a Vietnamese girl, I, I, I pray for you. Vietnam, first on our T tier toxic. Last but not least, we have Filipino girls. Filipinas. A Filipino would start drama with you because they feel like it and because they're feeling dramatic at the time. For that, I give T level toxicity. Why are you nodding too much, Miss Bellum? T-level toxicity for just how dramatic and exaggerated everything is. And on top of that, your house and car will get burnt down. All right, all right, all right. Now, now you're basically, we're going to discuss what do you guys think is the most toxic race is. Angel, would you like to go first since you're the lady? I don't think I can. Give me a second. All right, all right. Who wants to go first? Um, oh. The oh. toxic... We talking about toxic race overall, or just like guys and girls? Because that was just guys. I mean, we're guys. So we had to talk about girls, and Angela's yeah. a girl, so she had to talk about guys. I can talk about guys too. We'll say in general, <laughs> girls and guys. I'm gonna do girls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I only have experience with probably three Asian. But <laughs> cancel out an entire population, man. <laughs> you wanna go first, Brad? I'll go first. So, in my experience, Filipinos are the most toxic. <laughs> Only because um, they're so pretty, though. That's the only <laughs> ethnicity. What you, would you say? I said they're so pretty, though. That's they're the comment. most evil ones, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the only one of my exes that has cheated on me before. Was a Filipino, but then and then a lot of my friends and just like acquaintances, like a lot of them cheat, a lot. And it's not even just like it's you know it's their parents cheat, then they cheat on their spouses. It's just. It just keeps going. Oh, Lord. Who would cheat on Brad, bro? <laughs> I'll beat their ass, yo. <laughs> this is like, man, it's like 10 years ago now. I still beat their ass. Time ago. See you on the street. Meet me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. She got what? She got karma. So What was her That's karma? Cool. She got a kid. She got a kid. <laughs> and the, and the guy is no longer in her life. So Let's go. Mm. All is. right. So, so, you, so your, your assessment is Filipino women are the most toxic? Yeah. Okay. In my experience, Vietnamese haven't been okay as well as bad. Okay. Definitely, Filipinos are up there. Sorry. Respectfully, respectfully, respectfully. This is your reality. It's all good. I'm be sorry. Somebody changed my mind. All right, Reza, do you want to uh, go? Uh, you know, my answer is gonna be boring. All the girlfriends I've had have been like angels. So I, Aww. I think, I think I was. The this guy. toxic person. I'm serious. Yeah. Like, oh, you were the toxic I've only, one. I've only dated three women in my like 20s, and they've all been great. Um, however, uh, maybe I can speak to maybe from my friend's perspective, and I think that observation in terms of toxicity, how I would define toxicity is uh, emotional manip manipulation. Um, just uh, cheating is probably in there too. Just. The inability to just communicate your feelings and just like doing shit selfishly. Um, I think I think Viet will probably have to be up there, uh, especially the ABG ones. Um, again, this isn't my perspective. I think this is just from a bunch of friends who tell me, and they all seem. If I had like a Venn diagram of <laughs> the type of Asian women that I get talked about the most, I think Viet should probably uh, be there. Um, I can make a lot of excuses for them, but I just feel like they always feel like the grass is greener somewhere else because they're bad as fuck, right? And <laughs> nothing is ever enough. So it's always a constant game of like, the person I have now doesn't have this. So let me try to like sabotage this relationship and see if I can flirt with this other guy just to keep him at bay, right? Like if he's on the bench. Um, and I think at the end of the day, though, uh, emotional maturity will come. 
But I think from the perspectives that I hear from my friends who have dated Viet women and men, <laughs> uh, that's who I hear of the most. Uh, Filipinos are actually the opposite. They, I've heard they're the most wholesome. Uh, but again, 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 these are like, you know, my reality. But <clears throat> I don't have any experience of having any toxic women in my life. So, Jesse, what do you think are the most toxic guys? Yeah, you go first. <laughs> what? You're the one. You're next in line. Well, I mean, I, we were going like this. So she, I, she wants to go. She wants to go last. The person that has a variety oh. of women to talk about is Jay Chan. Bro. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know your list of toxic women, one through ten. <laughs> I feel I feel like you've went to the Cambodians, the Loatians. Like we can only talk about the big five of Asian countries: Chinese, Vietnamese, Filipinos. But I feel like I feel like you got an arsenal on you. Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hear. You got a whole football. Team. I have no arsenal. You have a whole Pokedex. I do not have a Pokedex. <laughs> I've been mine has been concentrated in certain regions. <laughs> okay, what regions? Certain regions, like. I'll give you an example. I've never been with like a full Korean. Okay, that's only probably half good for you. Koreans. You're not, you're not to brave enough to dive so. fully into the water. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, you trying to say half don't speak. count? I, trying to say I, half don't I've count? Had, I've had two halves, so no. I've had one hole. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I've been with two halves, so I've had have had one hole, and that one whole Korean person was not toxic. They were very angry though, weren't they? Did they have a short temper? No, I don't, see. Do you have a short temper? Yo, it might be a Korean thing. You think so? And it's not a mic. No, you, so? you guys are just your your patience level is like this so thin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like walking on thin ice. Oh shit! I, was, I feel attacked right now, but not really. So it's okay. All right, from what I've seen, okay, because none of the women in my life have been toxic. I feel like, I mean, yeah, I feel like no no girl has been, no woman to me has been toxic. It's always. You know, it's just a, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who who wants to be toxic to that baby face, man? Look Thanks, at man. It, Thanks, man. Look at this. Behind this baby face is a is a toxic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, from what I've seen, people who are the most toxic, and if you want to say toxic, what do you? It's not just cheating, right? What do you yeah, mean? Like being like a playboy, toxic, playing girl. It's like gaslighting, being, being gaslighting, you know? and things of that nature. Maybe causing drama, causing a scene. Yeah. I think that like toxic can be relative to the person. To the person, right? right. One thing that you may see toxic may not be toxic to somebody else. Okay, okay. The most outwardly toxic that I've seen, that I've seen, it just Filipinos and Viets. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Behind closed doors, toxic is Chinese people and Korean people. (laughs) And I say that as a Chinese guy. And I know behind closed doors, we are toxic. But it's not outward. We keep it behind closed doors. I feel it because... Chinese and Korean people are more like we have an image to uphold. We have like this image we're trying to trying to uphold, right? So we know toxicity seems like bad. So we kind of do like in the cut, like we're in the corner. We're like, yo, we're doing some shisty stuff right now, but don't let anyone know about versus Filipino and Viet people are more outward. Outward. Uh, Maybe not status simply, but they do stuff to garner more attention. Like the ABG look, I don't know, the ukulele, <laughs> uh, the stuff like that, you know, they're more outward about it. And because of that, we see their toxic traits more. <laughs> so it's, it's just depending on the. That's how I see it. That's it. You know what? I'm just gonna say you, I agree with you on everything you said. I would say the uh, Filipinos and Viets. In but general. do you think you say that because in our area, that's kind of yes. what is around the most? Yes, I agree with you. It's also like an echo chamber. Like anecdotally, from what I see around me, like, yeah, I feel like there's more Viets and yeah. Filipinos here. Yeah, and then probably next is like Koreans, and then honestly, you're all the only Chinese people I know. Yeah, it, you, and you're right because, and from my experience as a Chinese person and being, and I've been around some Chinese guys and girls and stuff. I've never been been around China, uh, toxic Chinese girls, but I know as the guys, we are toxic in a certain way. Like it, Chinese guys are toxic in a certain way. Okay, I can see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. They're very. Do you explain? <laughs> so Chinese people, I think I've seen this, and it's so true. We're not so driven on people hearing us in a way you know like we they're more focused on like their their i want to say like their actions will speak for them or what they have will speak for them not what they say does that make sense okay like i have a very very uh recent example okay so recently um somebody in my family passed away and we had a funeral Mm -hmm. okay in my culture um traditionally at a funeral everybody wears black you go to the funeral you say you're whatever call it a day it's over 
in Chinese culture, well, in our specific Chinese culture, because there's many Chinese cultures, freaking 1.6 billion of us, for, for God's sake. Um, in my specific culture, okay, first thing, when we get there, all the direct descendants, okay, on the dad, on the guy side, we have to wear a certain robe, a yellow robe which for means guys. We're, which means we're single. Yes. All the guys, like, so the sons, their sons wear yellow. Mm -hmm. So how do me and my brother wear yellow? So that signifies we are sons on the son's side. Mm -hmm. The girls on the son's side wear a different color. And if you're the daughter, you wear a completely different color. So every per person is labeled. So it's all a show. It's literally a, a, sh a show for everybody to see, like, oh, those are the sons. Those are the daughters. Those are, they are, uh, they don't carry the family name anymore. So they don't, they're not as important as those guys. Yeah. It yeah. is so. It is toxic in the sense that, Jesus like, Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yes. Yeah, so literally, that's a that's an example of one toxic trait that we are literally labeled. So every family has their issues, correct? Right. So sure. in my family, there's a lot of competition amongst the brothers. Okay. It's always a competition, and within one specific family, they're more competitive than the other. And then uh, within Chinese culture, and I feel like in a lot of uh, Asian cultures. The size of your family dictates the size of your power within your family because you have more hair heirs. You, you're, uh, the bigger your your family, the bigger your power. People care about that because Chinese people care about their name. That's why in China, they had the one child policy and everyone wanted guys because they wanted someone to carry on their name because they want to Chinese people, you can say they toxically care about their name, their family image. I think that's very Asian. Though, yeah. Where they want just your name carried and that can only happen if you have a son. Exactly. But it, Chinese people took it to the extreme yeah. by saying only one kid for some time. And they were like, all right, F the, age, F the girls. And no other country did that. Going back to it, what I'm trying to say is that the whole thing is a show, right? And on top of that, like, with their, their, my, my, my uncles and my dad are very, out, are very competitive. Some are not very, because some of them don't care. But like some of them, they, they do care. And then, like I said, the size of your family dictates how big and how powerful your family is. One of my particular uncles has a very large family mm -hmm. and he likes to just basically like like waggle that that like i got they pay like a basic a dick measuring contest for him saying that look i got the bigger dick than you because my i have like 40 people in my family yeah. and he just waves oh, it in damn. front of all his brothers yeah. you know what i'm saying it's like it's like that type of outwardly toxic thing like but see and see that's why for me kids are so important because it is like i am programmed to believe that i need kids i would say this it's program for you but for me it wasn't always like that exactly it's but different. even for me i don't even want as many kids as you want i only want two you yeah. were like i'll be cool with four i don't even want no, to no, okay, four. Okay, okay 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 let me elaborate let me elaborate okay i said okay at minimum i want to a boy and a girl Which right is fair. that's good i but i want a third one because i want one of them to have a brother or one to have a sister and like i have friends who don't have a brother I'm like damn you're missing out i love my brother and I, it's a great experience. And I'm sure, and like, you have a sister, and you love your sister, right? Could you imagine life without your sister? Yeah. Exactly. And so that's why, like, it's it's like it's for your children. Like, you know, I'm gonna give you a brother. I'm gonna give you a sister. It's it's an unselfish thing. If I had my way, it'd be two. But I want the third. I want one to have a brother or a sister. Or like, if I have two boys, I'm cool with that. Wait, so if you have two boys, you're done. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> well, I have a question. And if third, but but I want a girl. So if the girl comes, I'm like, dude, I, that's great. That's great. I, I want a girl. I have Man. a question for you and then for Angela. All right. Would you want them as close as possible? Like close in date as possible? I don't think that matters. You mean like month I don't think or that like? Matter. Would you be okay as a woman? Would you be okay? Because we were talking about this yesterday. To be pumping them out as fast as possible, or do you need a breather? Like one year, one year, like, one year, you're like, one year. Oh, okay. I mean, well, think about that question. Could you even handle also pumping them out one year after another? No, no. Mentally, emotionally. So, some women are built for that. <laughs> no, no, no. This, this, let me, let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay out both scenarios for you, right? You space it out. Right? Like me and my brother, we're three years apart, which means you have to go through the newborn phase twice. Right, where the, oh we're crying all day, or you know Jesse and I didn't cry. And supposedly people in our, our family don't cry when we're babies, but anyway, okay. so you have to deal with all that stuff being up at five a.m. Blah 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 blah, right? And then you have to do it again three years later, okay? Oh man! Or you Irish twins that joint like this, so they're really close, like ten years apart. So you literally have a two-year sprint where you're just you're exhausted, but after that you don't have to deal with it ever again. I hear you. Me personally, with my sister having four kids, okay, I do not think I could just pump them out. Okay, mentally. What's the date? What's the, what's the gap between them? For her kids. Yeah, four years. Uh, there's an eight, six, 
four, and then two. Two. The oh, that's perfect. Okay, that's, that's good. That's, that's perfect. Good. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two years. But I would say they should at least be two years apart. And I say that because I'm three years younger and then four years younger, sorry, than my sisters. Growing up, I felt like shit. I want to fit in. I want to do things they're doing, but I couldn't. I was little. You know, you know what he has a good input on this is Brad because his his little brother and little sister are like ten years younger than him, twenty years. <laughs> yeah, uh, between me and the youngest, it's like yeah, like twenty years, okay. twenty one years or something. And me and my next oldest brother is uh, nine. And I wish we were all closer in age, you're because I don't. I feel like the third parent. Yeah, to all of them, and I've always felt like that. Mm. So okay. yeah, so, I wish we were like like how you and Jesse are. I wish I had a. Had siblings as close as that. But do you think that because you are seen as like the third parent, you grew up fast? Because I would say, like, from what I know about you and your personality traits, you have very mature traits very fast. When I, feel I like first I had to be you. more responsible. Yeah. yeah. You're like, you you know exactly how to carry yourself. I, I remember we were talking about this the other day. Yeah, I don't get, but we were talking about getting angry and stuff. Yeah, I just, after a couple of days or whatever, I just let it pass through, or, or you don't outwardly like express it impulsively because you just i like to i like to sit on it yeah you sit on it and that's a very i I get over stuff fast yeah like i'll be mad in the moment but then like um yeah i'll just i'll just you know it's in the past it's whatever yeah and that's and i'm I'm over it and that's a very mature trait versus myself you know we grew i grew up as the youngest not even just amongst the kids in my family but always in my friend groups and everything because i was also the youngest in my class because my parents put me in school early and because of that i still grew up with like the childish kind of mentalities a little bit sometimes and you know how you mentioned like i don't, I don't get over it. i i'm just trying to get over that now where i don't impulsively get angry so fast yeah. and out really explode on it and i think it's because as the youngest when you do that before your your older brothers whatever or your parents would lecture you about it so you don't learn how to do it yourself you just kind of get baby through it Versus, be, I'm just giving you a silver lining in it, but because you're like the third parent, you're like, I learned how to do that very yeah. quickly. I mean, I'm not only the oldest in my family, uh, like kid wise, I'm the oldest in the entire, like out of my cousins, like I'm the oldest one. Damn, but how, what's, what's the second oldest cousin? Um, <coughs> he might be, he might be like a year or two older than my brother. Oh, dang. Damn. So I'm, damn. by like seven years, I'm oldest. There, there's nobody. Did for you seven ever, years, I was spoiled as shit. Did you ever sit on the yeah. on the at the kids table or no? It was just you at the kids table. And once everyone was born, you're like, I'm at the adult table now. Yeah, I don't even remember. <laughs> did you ever know. have cousins or anybody since you're so much old ask you to buy alcohol for them or anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they, they never did. Bro, since I was the oldest out of my friend group, I was the one in college just buying alcohol for everybody. Well, out of my friend group, I'm the youngest. Oh, <laughs> like in high school. I was because oh. I started a little bit early. Oh, okay. So you got a good balance, I guess. No. You got a good know. balance. I don't, think good... I don't think it's the same. <laughs> 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 your friends and your family, like, you know, I, yeah. I, I think I would rather have, I have a 16-year-old brother. I'm 30, so 14 years apart. Yeah. It's not until now that I get to, like, really talk about stuff that I get to be the brother I wish I had. Right? Yeah. Aww. So, um, which is cool. But and I don't want to derail the conversation, but I I feel you, uh, having a age gap like that. Yeah. Um, I had to wait a little while. He pissed me off though. For sure. <laughs> for sure. All right, back to the topic. Your turn, Angela. Toxic yeah. race. Who do you think is the most toxic race? From my personal experience. Of course. I can't say. Um. <laughs> What? Oh, she's really, a toxic really one. <laughs> Lame answer. I really can't. Um, but acquaintances, friends, like just people you know. Your observation. From my observations, though. And this is only within Asians, right? Yeah. It could be actually, no, you can, yeah, Asians. But uh, Asian also includes like Indians, too. Um. Well, shit, I don't know. But if I was doing it based off observation, I think I would agree that you get people. <laughs> might be <sorry>. yo <laughs> He's only yeah. it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. from what i've seen from growing up and from things that i've heard it's um actions can be a lot more accepted and okay that it's unfaithful towards like the relationship or there's abuse that's domestic violence things like that that i've heard i'm sorry we can scratch that. No, 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 no,
person that did that that I know is it's actually Viet. Viet. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now that I think about it, I'm like, oh wait. Yeah. Viet, the the country, not our friend. I'm hip. Viet is so good. He's so Viet, yeah, Viet, our Viet, friend. You, we love you. you would never I just need to clarify that, okay? The but country, yes. the country, <laughs> the country, <laughs> not, not our friend. <laughs> 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 no, but that, I think that's that's what I would say, and I think that's also because culturally just like how you grew up around here um i feel like that's what's most commonly not accepted but the behaviors that are okay and it's usually uh, yeah okay good. yeah Thanks okay for sharing. all right well, let's move to the next oh yes i'm gonna say yeah i was gonna say do you think this what well, we can leave it afterwards do you think that's because how they they saw their parents because like my mom and dad i never saw in a good way and a bad way. I never saw affection between them, and they never did anything bad to each other. It was, you know, they never were physically harming each other, none of that, but I also never saw any physical affection. So do you think once they see that, they're like, yo, I can do that when I'm older. You know Most what I mean? Most of the time, I do think it's environment. Yeah. And I think the environment will impact how someone acts. So, yeah. So if their parents were beating each other, they might do that you stuff. You think it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's either you think it's okay or you think, you know what, I never want to be yeah, like that. Yeah. I want to be someone different. You use that to drive you to become the person that you want to be. But most times, I think that you don't, people don't have the ability to see that as an opportunity to grow. Mm. And they'll see that as, ooh, I can act this way because it was enabled in my environment. Mm. And that's, yeah, so, I mean. I, I, I never thought about that because a lot of people use it as an excuse versus like a reason to be better. I like that. That's a good 